Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church, Moscow, Idaho, as we share with you a brief homily and our prayers for this coming Sunday, March 29th, 2020. I'd like to share with you some words from Psalm 46, and this is a contemporary version. Partly it's my own translation. God is our refuge and strength, a help always and near us in times of trouble. That's why I won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when God's people are threatened by instability. God is the only strong fortress. He is the security we cannot give ourselves. Recently, we've had the opportunity in this congregation to put out the word to our our community in Moscow that this congregation stands ready to serve people who need food, who need medicine, uh, who need any kind of assistance in getting things to their homes if they're shut home, especially the elderly. Anyone in the community we will help serve in this way. One of the people that called the church said that they needed some bread. I was the only one in the office that day and I said, sure, be happy to go get you some bread. What kind do you want? And they said, well, I like a specific kind of bread. It's called Seattle sourdough bread. It has the blue wrapping. So I went out to find this bread. I went to four grocery stores, and the fourth one was Safeway. And at Safeway, I found San Francisco sourdough bread. So I called this person, and I said, I found San Francisco sourdough bread. Will that be okay instead of Seattle sourdough bread? And they said, no, San Francisco is too dry. So I said, well, Safeway makes a nice French bread, a nice Italian bread, and a nice sourdough bread. I've used it quite often. I like it. Can I bring you some of that? Only if they pre-slice it, she said. So we had that done, and I took it to her, and she said, if I don't like it, I hate to throw good bread out. I said, call me, and I'll put it to use. She called me back and said that bread was just fine. It interests me how when things get unstable, people have patterns that they seek to stick to, to tell themselves that life is normal. I was at the Safeway shopping for myself, and there was a woman who was quite elderly, and she was barely taller than the handle on the cart, and she looked extremely afraid. And I said, can I help you find something? And she said, oh, that would be so nice. I can't find the milk. There's no milk in the cases. And I said, let's go look. So we walked back there and there was no milk. And she said, I need whole milk. Whole milk's the only kind that my husband will drink. And I said, well, here's a couple of uh, containers of 2% milk. Here's some half and half. What if you added half and half to it? Do you think you would like it then? And she said, that would be a good idea. Another example of how these times have created instability and fear in that one life. She also was confused by all the empty shelves of paper products and certain canned foods and, and eggs and butter and things that were, were sta staples for her. So we helped her find those things over the next few days. That's something we would do for our whole community. The example just speaks to how we strive to keep our lives stable. And at this time, in our personal histories, that which is stable is being rocked, so to speak, in a very broad way, in very wide ways, in diverse ways, in multifaceted ways. And we in our daily lives are trying to cobble together new routines, new norms, and new things that allow us to feel like things are stable. Perhaps I should more accurately say that all of this, all of this stability gives us an illusion about our own stability. Into every life, every little well-ordered world, there comes that time when something dislodges and a piece falls out of place or there's a crack in the wall. Things begin to fall apart. And we're sure experiencing that as a community and as a nation and as a world. When then, we ask ourselves, Will we realize that our well-constructed world is not so well-constructed? 
When then will we realize this? Recently, I took my 90-year-old father for a walk. And as we were walking, we had to cross the street, which means we had to go down a curb and then up a curb. I went down the curb first, stopped. He reached out and grabbed my shoulder and my elbow. He went down the curb. He had just broken a hip about a year ago. And we walked across the street and we had to go up the curb, which is a little harder for him. He grabbed my shoulder and my elbow and we went up the curb. And he says, when you get to be my age, with a hip that's once been broken, you realize that you're always one little step away from disaster. One false step, he said, one tumble can make your life completely different. He said, I'm sorry I had to grab your arm, but I didn't want some more bad news today. We do get bad news sometimes. We return uh, from a doctor's visit and we get a phone call that says, I need you to come back in for some more x-rays or some more scans. All of us have been glued to the TV broadcasts as of late that say we interrupt this program with breaking news, etc., etc., coronavirus issues. What then? Our world seems so stable and it's now broken apart. It's like the psalmist says, he images what a threat to our life, he images what instability could be like the water begins to rise. You feel the earth rumble under your feet. A mountain will collapse into the oceans. All images in the Hebrew mind that uh, illustrate instability or a threat to our lives. I think that's the feeling that this psalm gives to us. God is our refuge in strength, says the psalmist. And in the midst of life, there will be these things that make the earth heave the storm will make the waters uh, rocky and the waters will rise and the refuge and strength that we seek seems to be temporarily aloof from us and we wonder where it has gone. When the psalmist writes, God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of trouble. I think the psalmist is a person who has had some experiencing in life that were earth-shaking times of trouble and this person reached out and found that God was reaching back for them, caring for them when the world was falling apart, when they were suffering under the threat of instability. We were in a Bible study prayer group here recently and we were sharing some of our own spiritual practices that help us stay close to God. Some people said they found it helpful to pray at certain times of the day. Every day I set that time aside. Others said that, that for them, their main spiritual discipline was to read scripture every morning before they had their breakfast. I think spiritual habits and routines are excellent. They're great disciplines to have. They're spiritual practices that help our faith. However, note that the psalmist also says that there is one other way to be close to God, and this is against most of our thinking, and that is to have your world fall apart, have the mountains shake, the waters rise. God is our refuge and strength, a help in times of great trouble. This is a time to return to your God. Psalm 46 is one that I could share with you on and on about refuge and strength and God reaching back towards you. I love this contemporary version for in this time and in this age it seems to sound so clear. God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in time of trouble. That's why I won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when God's people are threatened by instability. God is the only strong fortress. He is the security we cannot give ourselves. Amen. I'd like to share the prayers for this coming Sunday. Let us pray. We turn our hearts to you, O God, 
for you are gracious and merciful. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. Enliven us through the presence of your Holy Spirit. Bless the work of this congregation and bless their renewal in you. Accomplish through us your work of salvation and in us for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you love the world you have made, and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore us, O Lord. Restore your creation, O Lord. Bring all things to new life through you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation. Those who are longing for wars to cease those waiting for immigration paperwork to finalize, those seeking election, those in dire need of humanitarian relief. Come quickly with your hope, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, pain, especially in this time of this coronavirus. Especially, Lord, watch over those who are nurses and those who are doctors and those who are in the field of medicine. Lead them with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with your compassion and empathy for all those who are struggling and keep them faithful in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray all these things according to your steadfast love and you hear them and all of our prayers through jesus christ our lord amen a couple of quick announcements for our congregation a reminder that davy dean who's been a member of this congregation since 1984 today is on his way to big lake minnesota david is being moved there by his sister and brother-in-law he is suffering from multiple sclerosis for many years. He has sold his house here in town, and off he goes to live with his family. We pray for their safety in travel. We pray for strength in David's healing. And we thank the Lord for his ministry with us for all these years. We also ask you to keep in your prayers Jan Martin as she recovers from surgery. And then lastly, remember the Moscow Food Bank. It has an enormous need for food, uh, staples especially, and things that are canned work best for the food bank. So we pray for them in their ministry to the hungry and the needy in our congregation and in our community and in our world. You can bring your food that you want to drop off here at the church and Lisa Allen will take them and transport them to the food bank. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.